This video will take a look at how images are represented in computer systems. So we've seen before how CPUs can only deal with sort of two states, they're made up of switches, and therefore they can only represent zero and one, hence the binary number system. But when any data is to be processed, whether it's characters, whether it's sound, whether it's images, the computer can only actually process the data if it is converted first into numbers, into binary numbers. And as we said, it's the same with images. So images are represented in binary numbers. So let's take a look at how that happens. Now, a bitmap image is made up of rows of dots called pixels. Each pixel is represented by a binary number. And behind the scenes of this one bit image with each color represented by a bit, it is in fact a series of numbers. So we've got zeros and we've got ones. So with a one bit image, each pixel is represented by a single bit, a zero and a one. A zero represents white and a one represents black. With an eight bit image, each pixel is represented by a byte, so by eight bits. And one byte can represent one of 256 different colors. With a 24-bit true color image, each screen pixel is represented by three bytes, and each byte represents a shade of either red, green, or blue, which combine to provide the pixel color. So let's take a look at the effect of resolution on the quality and file size of an image. So how can we improve the quality of an image in terms of how defined the image is? Well, what we do is we pack more pixels into the same space. So high definition movies and images give the illusion of higher quality pictures simply because there are more pixels in a given space. It produces that pixelated look. So higher dots per inch means higher resolution, which in turn means a more defined image, but also more data and therefore a bigger file size. Because you're fitting more pixels into a smaller space, it means that your image is gonna be made up of far more, uh, far more pixels and because each pixel is represented by um, its own binary number, if you've got more pixels, you've got more binary numbers, you've got more data, therefore the file size is bigger. So higher dots per inch means higher resolution, which in turn means a more defined image, but also more data and therefore a bigger file size. So how can we improve the quality of the image in terms of its depth in color? So the answer is that we have more colors to choose for each pixel. So the greater range of colors makes the image look more real. So higher number of possible colors that a pixel could be means higher color depth, which in turn means a more real looking image. But just like before, if you've got more data for each pixel, so lo longer binary numbers representing each pixel so that there can be more possible colors that each pixel could uh, represent, um, it means more data. So therefore the file size increases with an increase in color depth. So a low color depth means that each pixel is represented by a short binary number. A shorter number means fewer possible colors can be represented by that binary um, number. This means poorer quality images, but as there is less data, the file size will be smaller. So each pixel may re be uh, only represented by a nibble. So each pixel can only be one of 16 colors, for example. With a higher color depth, it means that each pixel is represented by a longer binary number. So longer numbers means that more possible colors can be represented by that binary number. And this means the quality of the image is going to be increased, but there's gonna be more data and therefore the file size will increase. So for, an, for example, each pixel may be represented by a 48 bit long number. So each pixel could be one of 281 trillion colors. But obviously, because you've got longer binary numbers for each pixel, that means more data in the file. That means a larger file size. So higher numbers of colors that a pixel could, me could be means higher color depth, which in turn means a more real looking image. But also more data is needed, therefore increasing the file size. So in summary, bitmap images are made up of rows of dots called pixels. The greater the number of dots per inch, the higher the quality but also the larger the file size as it holds more pixels, so therefore more data. 
Also, the more colors, the more real the image looks, but the bigger the file size as each pixel is generated from a larger binary number, therefore there's much more data. So in your exam, you might be expected to calculate the size of an image file based on its color depth and its resolution. And it might sound scary at first, but actually it's very simple. For example, if the file size of an image, um, if you, you're asked to find the file size of an image, which has 10 by 10 pixels and a four bit color depth, we simply do the following. So 10 by 10 pixels means that the image is going to have 100 pixels in total. A four bit color depth means that every pixel is represented by four bits. So 100 pixels each defined with four bits means that there's going to be four times 100 bits of data in total, which is 400 bits. So the file size is therefore 400 bits. Now, sometimes they might ask you to work that out in bytes. Now that works out at 50 bytes, simply because we know that there are eight bits in a byte. So if we see how many eights go into 400, in other words, we do 400 divided by eight, we can see how many bytes makes up 400 bits. And of course it's 50 bytes. So in summary, you work out how many pixels are in the image. You multiply the number of pixels by the color depth. If the question requires convert your answer, which is in bits, into bytes by dividing it by eight. And if the question requires it to be written in kilobytes or megabytes, divide your answer by a thousand or one million for megabytes. So metadata. So if you think about images, they're stored as binary numbers, but the computer needs to know how to interpret those numbers. You know, if you've just got a, a huge string of binary numbers, the computer won't know whether that's going to be um, a set of um, actual integers or whether it's going to be um, some text, so character representation, um, or whether it's sound. It needs to know what sort of file it is. So every image file will come along with some metadata. And the metadata is there to tell the computer what sort of file it is and how to interpret all of those binary numbers within the file. So it needs to be told the height and the width of the image and the color depth. So once known, it can work out it work its way through the binary numbers, interpreting them correctly and producing the intended image on the screen. So if it had a string of a thousand uh, bits, it knows that if it's going to have a color depth of four bit, it knows that every four bits is going to be the um, is going to be a new pixel. So it's basically data about data. It's known as metadata, and with metadata, the computer user can make sense of all the binary data as well as the computer itself. Have you ever right-clicked on an image file and looked at its properties? Well, that provides you with the metadata, and that's what the computer will use to know how to interpret the long strings of binary numbers so it can present the image on the screen for you.